Good afternoon, everyone. This is Steve Luckner with Right Side Broadcasting coming to you with a news alert, some news, some international news. Uh, I think it's kind of important news. We think it's kind of important here. We want to cover it for you. Saudi Arabia announced, I want to say in the last half hour, that they have overturned a long-standing ban on women driving, and they are going to allow women to drive in Saudi Arabia. Women had not been allowed to drive previously. And uh, so we're going to talk about this story, maybe try to see some reaction to it, get your reaction to it. Want to make sure you can hear me. Uh, I think well, it's that's loud, but uh, yes, you can hear me. I got to turn my speakers down. But uh, so we're going to talk about it and I want to get you some details. Uh, if you have comments on this story, write to me at Lookner on Twitter at L-O-O-K-N-E-R. Like to hear what you have to think. We would like to hear what you think about this story. So uh, let's Let's check out this article from the New York Times to start with. Um, Saudi Arabia agrees to let women drive. Let's check it out. So um, Saudi Arabia announced on Tuesday, today, just a little while ago, that it would allow women to drive, ending a long-standing policy that has become a global symbol of the repression of women in the ultra-conservative kingdom. Uh, so this Times article, as you can see, it speculates that part of the reason they overturned this is perhaps in Saudi Arabia. Uh, it was becoming like an international stain on their reputation, uh, but there might be economic reasons as well for them to do it. Let's keep reading here. Uh, the change, which will take effect, take it, which will take effect in June of next year, that's June of 2018, was announced on state television and in a simultaneous media event in Washington. The decision highlights the damage that the no driving policy has done to the kingdom's international reputation and its hopes for a public relations and it hopes from a for it, it hopes not its it hopes for a public relations benefit from the reform. And I will say uh, I think this was a surprise because I saw someone just a little before this announcement, somebody who covers Middle Eastern news who I follow, who's very well informed. Uh, that person tweeted out Saudi Arabia making some announcement coming up, but they didn't have any idea what it was. So this is kind of an out of the blue thing, at least as far as the people, the media I follow uh, are concerned. I hadn't heard anything about this coming up. So it's kind of a surprise that they're doing this. Um, and uh, continuing the article, Saudi Arabia, the birthplace of Islam, is a Muslim monarchy ruled according to Sharia law. Saudi officials and clerics have provided numerous explanations for the ban over the years. Some said it was, it was inappropriate for Saudi in Saudi culture for women to drive, or that male drivers would not know how to handle women in cars next to them. Others argued that allowing women to drive would lead to promiscuity and the collapse of the Saudi family. One cleric claimed, with no evidence, that driving harmed women's ovaries. Rights groups have long campaigned for the ban to be overturned, and some women have been arrested and jailed for defying the prohibition and taking the wheel. Uh, but the momentum to change the policy, sorry, uh, has picked up in recent years with the rise of Crown Prince Mohammed, Ibn, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, a 32-year-old son of the king who has laid out a far-reaching plan to overhaul the kingdom's economy and society. Beyond the effects it could have on Saudi Arabia's image abroad, letting women drive could help the Saudi economy. This is an interesting point here. Uh, low oil prices have limited the government jobs that many Saudis have long relied on, and the kingdom is trying to push more citizens, including women, into gainful employment. But some working Saudi women say hiring private drivers to get them to and from work eats up much of their pay, diminishing the incentive to work. So maybe the Saudi government is looking to allow women to drive to have more of them be able to enter the workforce. Uh, in recent years, many women have come to rely on ride-sharing apps like Uber and Kareem, I guess that's some, an app in uh, Saudi Arabia, to gain some freedom of movement. Uh, despite the announcement, women will not be able to drive immediately. Uh, the kingdom has no infrastructure to women. Sorry, I want to repeat that, again, repeat that again. Despite the announcement, women will not be able to drive immediately. The kingdom has no infrastructure for women to learn to drive or to obtain driver's licenses. The police will need to be trained to interact with women in a way that they rarely do in a society where men and women who are not related rarely interact. But many of the kingdom's professionals and young people will welcome the change, viewing it as a step to making life in the country a bit more like life elsewhere. So big policy change for Saudi Arabia, big social policy change. I mean, imagine if you lived in the country, which since, you know, since as long as you can remember, didn't let women drive. And then today they announced, well, starting next year, we're going to let women drive. Uh, that's a pretty big deal. And a very interesting point at the end of this New York Times article here, uh, it talked about how, um, 
you know, it's it's a, it says, you know, it's a kingdom. It's a place where uh, in a society where men and women who are not related rarely even interact. Um, so you have to have some setup for uh, these women to be trained to drive. Initially, it's going to have to be men who train them because they're the ones who drive. Uh, but presumably, I don't know if, you know, you can't just have in a society where men and women who aren't related rarely interact. You can't just open up, you know, big driving schools with men who the women don't know and say, hey, come learn from these men how to drive. Also, the police, uh, they're going to have to interact with women, but they don't normally interact with them uh, in, in, in that kind of way. Um, so, you know, it would make sense that it's going to take a little time for them to input this, put this policy in place. But uh, quite an interesting development here uh, from Saudi Arabia. And um, would like to hear what you have to think. What do you think about the story? Uh, write to me on Twitter at Lookner at L O O K N E R if you have any thoughts on this. And thank you, Christine Bestian gave a donation. She said, "Great, great news day, Joe Stephen Mods. Proud of RSBN. Yeah, we've been all day. We've been on all day. We've been covering the college basketball story. We've been covering President Trump's news conference, and today we are uh, covering this story. And tonight we're going to be covering uh, the uh, strange uh, Moore Alabama Senate election." But right now we're covering the story, Saudi Arabia agrees to let women drive. Uh, Patriot of Truth says, is this a change of law that has occurred in Saudi Arabia? We would like to have more details. Well, uh, as far as I'm aware, what, uh, what the kingdoms, what, what the... Uh, what the royal family says goes. It is a monarchy in Saudi Arabia and it was announced on state TV. So I don't know the exact governmental structure there. I do know it's a monarchy. So as far as I'm aware, if it comes on state TV and it's announced by the monarchy, hey, we're going to make this change, then it's, you know, that's a change. It's, it's, uh, the monarchy is the supreme authority there. So, uh, it's, uh, it sounds like, yeah, it's, a, the monarchy declared on state TV this change is being made. So it's being made. It's as good as a law change. And you might say it is, I don't know, technically, is it a law because the laws are what the monarchy says? I don't know about the phrasing, but, you know, that's, uh, it's as good as, it, it, that, it's a policy change. It now applies to the kingdom because the monarchy said it. Uh, Chaz Pakan writes in, wow, I am shocked. Finally, good for the Saudis. Let me know if you have comments, at Lookner on Twitter. By the way, thank you again for Christine for making that donation. Uh, we are viewer supported. Uh, so if you like that we come on and cover stories like this and give you live coverage, uh, please consider donating because we rely on donations to stay on the air. We can't stay on the air without, without donations. Even small donations help. So you can donate by clicking the dollar sign at the bottom of the YouTube chat right next to the broadcast. There's a YouTube chat and a dollar sign at the bottom. You can click on that. Or you can go to rsbn.tv slash donate, rsbn.tv slash donate. Also, if you want to know, we've, we've, we've been coming on the last couple of days with a lot of breaking news updates. If you want to know when we're coming on the year with breaking news videos, subscribe to us on YouTube and click on the notifications bell. Uh, and um, sorry about that. Subscribe to us on YouTube and click on the notifications bell so you get notified about our videos. And uh, follow us on Facebook at Right Side Broadcasting as well. We put our videos up there. All right, I want to I want to show you another thing. In addition, I want to get some more information about the story, but I'd also like to see some Twitter reaction about it. I saw some people posting on Twitter about it, uh, different people. So I want to see if I can find some reaction. So Alec Loon, who writes for The Telegraph, tweeted this out. He says, having allowed women into sporting events, Saudi Arabia is now letting them drive. I might check that article out in a second from The Telegraph. By the way, this just in real quick while we're covering this story, uh, Bob Corker, Bob Corker will not seek re-election next year. I'm just hearing this, uh, so I'll have to do a little research on this story. We'll focus on the Saudi Arabia story right now. Maybe we'll talk, we'll definitely talk about this a little later tonight when we're covering the Luther Strange uh, Roy Moore election in Alabama. But for now, let's stick on this story. We can't do two stories at once. It gets confusing. Uh, let's see here. Here's a reaction just of somebody on Twitter. They posted, somebody named uh, Delijah posted, I never thought this day would come. Uh, Alf Marbuk to, uh, Marbuk to Saudi women in TV, NYT Ben. Thank you, NYT Ben, for the awesome news. So some people very happy about this. Let me see if I can find anything more. Ben Hubbard says, 
if all goes according to plan, women will drive in Saudi Arabia on June 24th, 2018. Here's an interesting tweet. The decree did not address the issue of whether Saudi women will need permission of a male guardian to win a driver to obtain a driver's license. Interesting question. And again, this was a royal decree. Uh, Joyce Karam uh, tweeted out, this was a royal decree and it's a monarchy. So that, that changes it. And also she said, uh, Joyce Karam said, big move, big week for reforms in Saudi and women's status. For those of us who have this right, it's no small thing for Riyadh, big leap forward. That's according to Joyce Karam. Now, I, you know, I, I would imagine there are probably some people in Saudi Arabia who aren't happy about this change. I mean, it is a uh, it is a Muslim monarchy. Uh, I'm guessing there are some conservative people who aren't happy about this change. So probably some mixed feelings over there. Joyce Karam also says, expect more to come from Saudi Arabia. Vision 2030 equals speedy reforms on all levels of society. Last 48 hours, women are allowed to, allowed to drive and go to stadiums. Now, that's interesting. Um, did that, did the go to stadiums thing, I didn't hear about that actually. Did that just happen? Let me look that up. Apparently that happened too. Ah, so this was two, just two days ago this happened. Two days ago, Saudi Arabia allowed women to, into, into stadiums. Mixed audience permitted for first time as national day festivities promoted patriotic pride and said, Saudi Arabia has allowed women into the national stadium for the first time as it launched celebrations to mark 87th anniversary of its founding with an unprecedented array of concerts and performances. Um, let's see what else. I don't see anything about why, about them letting women into stadiums like all the time but they did that two days ago. Yeah, so they allowed women into this uh, into the national sports stadium for the first time two days ago, and now this today, uh, where they are saying they're allowing women to drive. Fit to be tied writes, Steve, this may be even bigger than it seems. A few days back, a Saudi cleric was suspended for calling women half-brained and quarter-brained when they shopped. Here's the link on Reuters about it. Oh, thank you, Fit to be Tied. So Fit to be Tied sent me this story from, now this was when? This was uh, four days ago in Reuters story, which said Saudi cleric suspended over quarter brain women drivers clip. A Saudi cleric who said women should not drive because their brains swing to a quarter of the size of a man's when they go shopping has been banned from preaching. So who knows, you know, if this, if this story, uh, it says the comments sparked anger on social media. Maybe this was something, so maybe this driving policy was something that Saudi Arabia, the monarchy was thinking about. And this happened a few days ago, this thing about how uh, this Saudi cleric was suspended over, over saying women shouldn't be allowed to drive and it was a big social media thing. Maybe that was the final catalyst that pushed the monarchy to make the change today. I don't know, but thank you Fit to be Tied for sending me in that story. If you have thoughts on this story, give me a shout on Twitter at Lookner at L-O-O-K-N-E-R. Uh, Zach Giannino writes in, this is exciting news. Although it makes me feel like I was a born, a born a thousand years too early. It blows my mind. This is a big leap forward, SMH. See, I want to try to get some more reaction to this. So 
so I'm seeing a lot of different people posting about this. Uh, let me just check this Telegraph article real quick. Telegraph says, Saudi Arabia to allow women to drive. Uh, women in Saudi Arabia will be allowed to drive, ending a law which made the Gulf nation the only country in the world. Telegraph says the Gulf nation was the only country in the world to forbid female drivers. Amazing. I'm going to tweet that out. To the Telegraph. According to the Telegraph, Saudi Arabia was the only country in the world to forbid female drivers. Uh, we can see a tweet there from Sarah, Hus Sarah Hussein. I don't know who Sarah Hussein is. Sarah Hussein is a reporter with AFP. And she says, uh, it's sort of depressing. It's sort of depressing how genuinely big of a deal this feels. And it says it comes days just after the country allowed women's women to enter sports stadiums for the first time. Now says campaigners have for many years argued that women should be allowed to drive, saying that it makes virtual prisoners out of women who do not have a male family member or chauffeur, or chauffeur to drive them around. Here's an interesting thing. Uh, in June 2011, about 40 women got behind the wheel and drove in several cities in a protest sparked when Manal Sharif, one of the founders of the movement, was arrested and detained for 24 hours after posting a video of herself driving. Another was arrested and sentenced to 10 lashes, a sentence later overturned by the king, and the rest were told to sign statements guaranteeing they would not drive again. And this person, Lexi Alexander, says she's a Palestinian-American filmmaker. And she, tw she tweeted out, Bravo at Lujain Hathiul, and shout out uh, to your fellow courageous feminists who have been arrested. For, oh, this, that was uh, for dry, who have been arrested for driving. I guess maybe that was in reference to people who uh, had been arrested before for driving, and now this policy change had happened. And she was saying, good job in, in working for this policy change. And again, at the end here, it says a lot like sort of like the New York Times article says the movement gained prominence, prominence, the movement to let women drive gained prominence with the rise and power of Crown Prince Mohammed Ibn Salman, the 32 year old son of the king who has laid out a far reaching plan to reform the kingdom's economy and society. Society. Furthermore, Saudi Arabia, hit by the fall of oil prices, is aware of the economic contribution that women could make and uh, them driving would contribute to that to be able to do this. Deplorable Kathy writes in, this is great. I remember once uh, the wall fell in 1989, then all of Europe followed. The floodgates are now open. It's a good thing. Connor Wells says, Saudi Arabia allowing women to drive is a very big step towards modernization. This is certainly not the last of these announcements regarding Saudi society. And I'm just checking. Uh, Garrett says, maybe tomorrow these Saudi women can le legally buy a six pack of beer and some pork sausage. Okay, I think right now what we're going to do is we want to also cover this uh, Bob Corker news. So I think we're going to end this stream now and then do another stream about Bob Corker saying he's not running next year. So uh, you can keep an eye out for that stream. That'll start in a few minutes. Uh, you can, If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to us on YouTube. Click the notifications bell on YouTube so you get a notification about it. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Right Side Broadcasting. You can follow us on Twitter, at RSB Network. And I am on Twitter at, at Lookner. I post breaking news stuff a lot. And I'll post more about the Saudi Arabia. If there are more Saudi Arabia reforms, I will post on my Twitter about them. So uh, and thank you, uh, everybody, for watching right now and for uh, writing in your comments and also for the donations. We are viewer-supported. We can't stay on the air without your donations. So if you like our news coverage, 
please consider donating. You can donate by going to rsbn.tv slash donate, rsbn.tv slash donate, or you can just click on the dollar sign in the YouTube chat at the bottom of the YouTube chat during any of our broadcasts. And uh, thank you uh, for uh, to the moderators, as always, for moderating the chat. Hi, JC. I see you there. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to wrap the stream up right now. And then I'm going to, in a, let's say, five, ten minutes, we'll come on with another stream. Maybe ten minutes, let's say. We'll come on with, with another stream about Bob Corker uh, saying he's not going to run. Uh, so, but for now, for now, I am Steve Lugner with Right Side Broadcasting. Have a good day. And if you join us for the Bob Corker stream, we'll see you in a few minutes. Talk to you soon.